Took a look at this article, seven top dividend growth ETFs for 2020. And this topic of dividend growth ETFs with a focus on growth is what I want to digest in this video because what exactly is the difference between a dividend ETF and a dividend growth ETF? So to answer that, we have this article plus a big thing of data that I put together that we're gonna take a deep dive into right now. Right, so let's read some of this article. For dividend seekers and those looking to live off of income generated by their portfolio, dividend growth stocks are a popular investment choice. Many of these stocks aren't necessarily the highest yielders in the world, but their ability to steadily and consistently raise their dividend year over year make them ideal from a standpoint of predictability. All right, skipping through some of this. For the purposes of this list of seven ETFs, I'm going to stick with funds whose primary objective is dividend growth. There are many more funds out there such as SCHD, SDY, which combine dividend growth requirement along with other requirements such as high yield, balance sheet, so on and so on. So what he's saying is this is a list of pure dividend growth ETFs. Now, this is a list of seven, but I'm gonna focus on just the top four because they're the most popular. So we got VIG, DGRO, DGRW, and Noble, the classic dividend aristocrats ETF. So let's see what he has for VIG. So it says, VIG is considered by many to be the elite dividend growth ETF. It tracks the NASDAQ US Dividend Achievers Select Index, a benchmark which includes companies that have a 10 year plus track record of raising their dividends annually. The portfolio contains a little more than 200 names, such as Microsoft, Walmart, Procter & Gamble, and Visa. It's a deceptively simple strategy that has earned VIG Morningstar's highest five-star rating over the past five years and a four-star rating since inception. Okay, so this is all pretty touchy-feely, feel-good kind of stuff, but I'm a numbers guy, so I got the numbers laid out right here, and we're gonna do this in a comparison type of a way. But first, let's take it one at a time, same as in the article. So this is VIG, V-I-G. We can see the assets under management, the expense ratio, and the dividend yield. So the dividend yield is, it's low. It's one and a half percent. That is basically the same as the SP 500. The expense ratio is the lowest on this list, 0.06%. And of course, it's very popular. Now, if we move on from the core info, this is a dividend summary. And the main thing I wanna focus on here is the five-year average growth rate of the dividend because this is a dividend growth ETF. So this is probably the single most important number. And we can see that it's 5.7%. Now the thing is, if we look at the SP 500, so just, just the general market, we can see the dividend growth rate is almost the same, just over 5%. Also not to mention the starting dividend yield is also almost identical. VIG was just 0.2% more. The next piece of data I have here is the total return. So this includes reinvesting the dividend and it's for a five year period of time. And we can see the annual return is just over 12%. And if you started with 10,000 bucks five years ago, you would have 17,800 bucks today. And then I also included this section. So this is just the sector allocation and the top 10 holdings. So you can kind of just glance over this and see if you like it. And like I mentioned, I'm going to be comparing all these together at the end, but I want to take them one by one first. So the next one on this list is DGRO. So it says perhaps somewhat lesser known than VIG, but equally as impressive, DGRO requires a more modest five-year dividend growth streak in order to qualify for this portfolio. So there's a potential for a little more uncertainty. The fund helps to alleviate that by adding a screen for payout ratios in order to help ensure that the dividend can be maintained and grown over time. So this is DGRO, we can see the very low expense ratio, the dividend yield is about 2%. Coming over here, we can see the five-year average growth rate is 10%. So that's a nice increase, 2% starting yield and 10% average year-over-year -year growth in that dividend. Taking a look once again at the total return, we can see that the annual return is 16%, and we started with 10,000 bucks five years ago, and you would now have 21,150 bucks. And lastly, if we look at the allocation, this is what it is. You're gonna see a lot of the same names as with VIG because of course they're focusing on very similar topics. Wisdom Tree US Quality Dividend Growth ETF, DGRO is next. So it says DGRO is an underrated ETF that takes a bit of a different approach to dividend growth. 
Instead of looking for past history, it looks at the ability to pay and grow the dividend in the future as its primary selection criteria. That's kind of cool. It considers long-term earnings growth, return on assets, return on equity, and making its determination, while also requiring that the company's earnings yield is greater than its dividend yield in order to help ensure sustainability is not a question. Okay, so let's see how much that uh, process affects the numbers here. So we can see the starting yield is 1.7. Okay, respectable. Expense ratio is a bit more. Uh, it's 0.28% versus the 0.08% of the previous one. Looking at some more numbers, we can see the five-year average growth rate is 8.3%. Okay, so that's pretty modest, I would say. Uh, looking at the total return, the annual rate of return is just over 16%. And if you started with 10,000 bucks five years ago, you would now have $21,100. And finally, the allocation and the top 10 holdings are on the screen right now. And finally, we have the ProShares S&P 500 Dividend Aristocrats ETF, Noble. And it reads, perhaps the name most synonymous with dividend growth, Noble, only considers companies that have paid and grown their dividends for at least 25 years thus earning the Covenant Dividend Aristocrat title. As the company notes, this fund includes many companies with stable earnings, solid fundamentals, and strong histories of profit and growth. And we can see how it reflects in the numbers. So dividend yield right now of 1.87%, expense ratio 0.35%. Coming over to the five-year average growth rate of the dividend, we can see it's the highest so far, 11.6%. Taking a look at the total return, we can see it has an annual return of 14.32%. And if you put in that same 10,000 bucks five years ago, you would now have 19,459 bucks. And finally, the allocation and top 10 holdings are as following. You're gonna notice that this ETF is the most differentiated versus all the others in terms of their holdings and the way it's weighted. Okay, so now it's comparison time. Which one is the best and why? So the first thing I'm gonna do is piss off a lot of people and say VIG is the worst. Just based off of numbers, um, I understand it's like the most popular, but it just performs the worst. So let's kind of go vertically here. So we can see VIG has a starting yield of one and a half percent, and that's the lowest out of all of these. So it's going to get a demerit. It has the absolute lowest dividend yield. But of course, this is growth. So if we come over and look at the five-year growth rate, once again, we can see that this has the lowest growth rate, only 5.7%. If you recall, I showed you the SP500 had a growth rate of 5%. So it's not much better than that. DGRO was 10%, DGRW was 8%, and Noble was 11% dividend growth. So VIG is definitely lacking. And if we look at the total return, VIG is also the worst. When it comes to the annual return, VIG was 12%. Every other one was substantially above that. So VIG had the worst total return of all these ETFs. Now, if we're trying to find the best one, I have to say, I think it's DGRO. It's close to the other three, DGRW and Noble, but there's a few reasons why I think DGRO is the best. So first of all, it has the highest starting yield, 2%. Uh, DGRW was 1.7 and Noble was around 1.9. And along with that high dividend yield, it has a growth rate of 10.7%. That's only slightly beat out by Noble with 11.6% dividend growth. And of course, DGRW lacks both of them with just an 8.3% uh, yearly growth rate. Now the total return, this is probably the most important thing and we can see DGRO has a total return or an annual return of 16.24%. That's more than Noble, which is only 14.32%. And DGRW is a close second at 16.9%. But considering that DGRW has a slower dividend growth rate, that is why I'm saying DGRO is the best overall uh, dividend growth ETF. It has the highest starting yield, it has the second highest growth rate, it has the highest annual return, and I like the companies that it holds within it. Of course, DGRW and Noble are also extremely high quality ETFs. Same thing with VIG, all of these are quite exceptional, but we're trying to find the best. I mean, that's just what we're trying to do. And to me, DGRO fits the bill the best. But in terms of pure dividend growth, Noble is the highest with a five-year average growth rate of 11.6%. Well, that's going to do it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed and got something out of it. If you did, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, 
and I'll see you next time. Time.